Hi everyone, my name is Joan and I work in the office at the assistant, as the assistant administrator for those of you who don't know me. I wanted to tell you about some exciting things going on in God's house. First of all is prayer. You are prayed for, every one of you inside and outside of this building are prayed for by the staff. Did you know that if you take the letters of prayer and separate them, they stand for prayer releases, all of your eternal resources. We want all of the eternal resources that God has to wash over every ministry taking place under the umbrella of Spring Hill Baptist Church or Dover Foxcroft Farm, inside or out of the building. Then you have small groups. Small groups are just another way. It's a more intimate way for you to connect with other people and with God. So get involved with that as well. The youth group, who's also a sort of small group, has a youth winter retreat coming up February 10th through 12th. This is for grades 6 through 12. Be sure to get your name on the list for this fun-filled event. Finally, we have Uversion, which is just another way to connect. There is a Uversion app that has a different reading Bible study plan each week. Some are three days, some are four days, some are a week. You pick which option works best for you. So come on, get involved, and remember to keep your eyes on the sun. Have a great week. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all of the people. The church isn't an address. It's not made of stone. It's a family of faith that calls Christ its home. An eternal bond forged by his blood. In the Bible, it says, we're united as one. Some are the hands and some are the feet, all working together for needs we can meet. One in our purpose, one in our mission, the body of Christ plagued with tunnel vision to tell of his glory and the death that he died, to share the one truth of Christ crucified. So here is the church, but there ain't no steeple because the church is the body and the body is people. Please join us as we sing and worship.
Miss Chris. I'm the children's minister here at Spring Hill Baptist Church, and today I have some questions with my friend, Miss Penny. The first question I have is, Miss Penny, do you know what it is to have vision? A vision. Um, let me think. A vision. That would be using your eyeballs. Yeah, that's it. You can see, and that's called vision, right? Well, that is a definition of vision. You do use your eyes to see, but well, that's not really what we're talking about. It's more like using your imagination to see what you could do with your future by using godly wisdom. You know, things like bringing hope, sharing Christ, and impacting our world. I have another one. What is a mission? Penny? Okay, a uh, mission. Hmm, I know. I got a mission to find the answers. Right? <laughs> I used to watch that show too. Mission Impossible. But that's not it. This mission is possible. It's like, well, an important assignment. You know how you have assignments in school? Well, this is like an important assignment from God. You know, get out there, create opportunities for people to follow Jesus Christ. That would be the mission. But I have one more. What do you think core values are? Huh, okay, core values, let me think. Apples have cores, and if you care about them, then they're valuable. Core values, right? Yep, core. That's hysterical. We do not put any value in apple cores. That is not what we are talking about at all. Core values, well, those are priorities. You know, things you do that are led by, well, your deepest beliefs your belief in Jesus Christ as your savior. And here we have three C's, and those are compassion, collaborate, and commit. You know, to be compassionate, that is, well, loving God and loving others. Collaborating, that's partnering with other people in our community and even other churches. <laughs> and one more, committed. We're committed to teaching others. We want them to be able to serve, disciple them, and help them learn to be real worshipers. That's what we're talking about today. And uh, Penny, I'm glad we had this time together. And I hope it taught you something too. Today's message is entitled, As a Church. As we have entered into the new year, the year 2023, I want to share with us today Spring Hill's vision and mission and values and strategy. 
these were developed some years ago with people who prayed together, they read scripture together, uh, they looked at the, the culture and context and the setting in which we're living here in America. They, they had great discussion with larger groups. They listened to many people. They listened to God. They listened to one another. They researched. They prayed. They, they visited with uh, pockets of people in Spring Hill Baptist Church and asking them questions about what do they see God doing and what does the scripture say that we as a church should be about and who we are as a church? And this was a, a year long endeavor. And then this was brought before the leadership team and brought before multiple ministry teams and then brought before the church. And we actually approved this. And many times when this happens in local churches, it's kind of put away and then everything just kind of goes as as it has been. That's not been the case for Spring Hill Baptist Church. God laid these things on our heart and on our minds and in our lives as a congregation. And we are moving towards this vision and mission and values and strategy that I'm going to share with you today. If you'll take your Bibles or go to the YouVersion app, if you use the YouVersion app, you can open that up and go over to the bottom right and you see more then events pops up and you'll see Spring Hill Baptist Church and you can follow along with some of the slides, with scripture verses. However, if you have a hard copy Bible or you don't use the YouVersion app right now, you can take your Bible and go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. So 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. If you just put that in your search engine on your computer or on your phone right now, it, it'll come up and there'll be numerous places where you can go Bible Gateway or uh, Blue Letter Bible or a uh, new version might even pop up, but you can go there and you can read this. I'm going to be reading from a hard copy Bible that I've used for a number of years now. And I'm reading from today out of the New American Standard version of that. First Peter chapter two, verses 10 and 11, as we look at our vision, mission, values and strategy that God has laid on our heart and that we are seeking to live out and to flesh out as a congregation, as the body of Christ, as God's people. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Um, so I'm going to re read this out loud here. Here's verse, and actually, I'm sorry, it's actually verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into lightness. So my apologies, that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Here's verse 10. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Peter, one of the followers of Jesus Christ, is right. He wrote this letter to a group of people that are dispersed. And he's reminding them, he's letting them know if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you are God's people. You're the holy nation that God wants to set up. A holy meaning a set apart group of people so that you can proclaim the excellencies of him that would be God, Jesus Christ, so that you can proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness or out of death and into this marvelous light. And so that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And so as we look at the vision and mission and values and strategy today, what you're hearing today is for the church. So as a church, Spring Hill, as a church family, Spring Hill Baptist Church, as the people of God, Spring Hill Baptist Church, as those who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So that is the first thing. Spring Hill Baptist Church is a church family, the body of Christ, the people of God, who, that is made up of people who have come to a point in their life 
where they realize that God loves them and created them. The, the triune God, the God of the Holy Scriptures, that they had sinned, I had sinned, and we had sinned and fallen short of God's glory, and we needed forgiveness. And that forgiveness is found in God's provision of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus who lived, Jesus who taught, Jesus who died on the cross, and Jesus who was raised from the dead. And then myself and the people who are part of Spring Hill Baptist Church and, and who have said, yes, I'm going to follow Christ. We came to a point in our lives where we said, I am accepting Christ. I am offering myself to God. God, forgive me of my sins. And, and in that, we become a part of this holy nation, this royal priesthood, this people of God, this people who are set apart. God calls us out of darkness, out of the sin, out of death, out of moving our own way. That goes all the way back to the beginning of creation where God set us in paradise, in Eden, and we break it. <laughs> and we live in this fallen world and we need forgiveness and we have realized that. So today's message is for those people who have made that decision. But it's also, it's also us proclaiming this message. And it says that we will proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So it's not that just we have accepted Jesus Christ and are a forgiven people and a forgiven person and we come into this congregation and, and we start cooperating, we start working together. It's we have a message to proclaim uh, and it's a beautiful and wonderful message. And so that message, the central theme is Jesus Christ is Lord. He is real. He, he lived. He taught. He was put to death. He has been raised up from the dead. And he is alive and vibrant. And in theology and biblically, there's this person of God called the Holy Spirit who invades our lives when we trust Christ. And he's living in us and through us as a group of people. And we are proclaiming Christ. And so as you hear the vision, as you hear this mission and the values and strategy today, please keep in mind, this is all about God. <laughs> this is all about God and his work and his restoration and, and his redemption and his forgiveness and how he desires to work in us and through us as individuals and and as what is called the local church, the, the body of Christ, the, the people of God, we are witnesses of God's work. And so here's the vision after much prayer, discussion, scripture reading, um, dialogue, visiting with little pockets in the congregation, being sensitive to God after what's, what's happening in the culture, what, what does God want us to be about in this big umbrella picture? Here's the vision. Bring hope, share Christ, impact the world. Bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. We are a people of hope. We are a pe pe people of a bright future. We are a people of heaven. We are a people who are allowing God to work in us and through us to usher in God's kingdom into this world as we help move people into this eternal kingdom and into this eternal life, into this e eternal paradise and bliss. So bring hope. We are a positive people, even in the midst of difficulties, even in the midst of struggles. We have a message of hope. But in that message, and central to our vision, is sharing Christ. We're going to share Christ. We're going to share Christ with our family members. We're going to share Christ with our children. We're going to share Christ with teenagers. Uh, we're going to share Christ with our co-workers. 
Uh, we're going to share Christ with people who live in central Virginia. We're going to share Christ with people who live in our subdivisions. We're going to share Christ with people who live throughout the United States of America. We're going to share Christ, and we are sharing Christ, with people who live internationally. Share Christ and impact the world. We are a people who are proclaiming the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into light. And so in that, we're impacting the world. We're making a difference in people's lives as God has made a difference in our lives. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this. You can It's in the YouVersion app and if you want to go there real quick, you can do that, but I'm just going to quote it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. This vision takes faith. This vision means we as a people, as a church, have to venture out in faith. Faith in our ministries, faith in our serving, faith in our giving, uh, faith in our worshiping. We just have to move forward in faith as we pray for one another and with one another, as we ask God to do a work in us and through us, it requires faith. And so this biblical vision requires faith. And we as a church have to venture out in faith. And we call each other as individuals to venture out in faith. And we encourage one another to, to keep the faith. Another thing about this vision, this biblical vision, we are about glorifying God. When we, when we are bringing hope, when we are sharing Christ and seeking to impact the world, this is all for God's kingdom and for God's glory. And then a third thought on this, and there's many more, but a third thought on this is this vision will call us as a church out of our comfort zone. It will call you as an individual out of your comfort zone. So bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. I want to encourage you to memorize that if you're a part of Spring Hill Baptist Church. Bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. And now our mission. Our mission statement is very brief and very short. And we want it to be that way so that we can memorize it, so that when we mention this, we are thinking, hey, how are we uh, fleshing this out? When we evaluate, we're like, hey, here, here's our mission statement. Is this helping us accomplish our mission statement? Create opportunities to follow Jesus. Create opportunities to follow Jesus. That's our mission. That, that's our purpose. That, that is our objective. That, that is the business that we are about. Um, that is our assignment. That is our calling. And that is our goal, if you will, or a word that some Christians are familiar with. That is our commission. And so now we'd like for you to go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And for those of you who are using the YouVersion app, this will be listed there. Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 and following. This is Jesus Christ after he is resurrected some, the followers have gathered together, and here's a description. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were still a little doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them and said this. This is Matthew 28, 18 and following now. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Basically, we took that passage and numerous other passages out of the New Testament and even Old Testament and determined, let's make this very brief so that we can memorize it, so that we can meditate on this, so that we can live it out. And we are creating opportunities to follow Jesus. That's it. What, what's your purpose as a church in Spring Hill? 
create opportunities to follow Jesus? What are you doing in your children's ministry? Well, we might be doing many facets of ministry, but but we're create we're going to create opportunities for children to follow Jesus, for pe- children to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and begin to grow in that. We're going to do the same with students, uh, with young families, with the middle aged, with people who are retired, with uh, senior adults. We're going to create opportunities for people to follow Jesus Christ. That word create was chosen on purpose. That means we're not just going to do the same thing that we've always done. We're going to evaluate. We're going to assess. We're going to look at, hey, what's happening here? We're going to let God speak to us. We're going to hear from God. We're going to have communication, which we'll talk about in just a minute, as team members with teams to say, hey, what's going on? How can we better create opportunities for people to follow Jesus? How can we better help understand that, uh, p- help people understand that Jesus really does love them and care for them and that he is a real figure and a historical figure and the risen Lord and Savior. So create opportunities to follow Jesus Christ. That's what we're about. That's what we're going to do. We want you to grow in your walk with Jesus if you've accepted Christ. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, we want you to consider the claims and we will create opportunities for you to consider those claims. We will create safe places for you to ask questions. As a matter of fact, any question is a fair question here in Spring Hill Baptist Church because we're creating opportunities for people to follow Jesus Christ. We want people to come to the point where they hear about Jesus Christ and they basically make three decisions. They either accept Jesus Christ or they do not accept Jesus Christ or they're kind of giving thought about what Christ might mean to them. But we're eventually going to say, look, we want you to accept Jesus Christ and experience his restoration and his redemption and the eternal life that he brings. In doing this, okay, create opportunities to follow Jesus. In doing, in, in living out the bringing hope and share Christ and impact the world, I'm going to highlight just a few things that we're already involved in. All right, it's January the 15th, and we are already involved. It's not that we're waiting to the second quarter. It's not that we're waiting on God. We have heard from God, and we are on the move. We have already been in a local school, a local public school, and served lunch to some of the administrators of that school and just let them know that, hey, this is on Spring Hill Baptist Church. Thank you for your involvement in children's lives. Here it is, January the 15th, and we already have a group of people signed up to make a trip to Charlotte, North Carolina. They're giving of their time. uh, They're planning this out. They're taking time away from family and work, and they're driving and traveling to Charlotte, North Carolina. They're going to work with Operation Christmas Child. We have a team lead who's put this together, and that that group of people is going to spend three days packing boxes with Operation Christmas Child and praying over those boxes that will be sent to parts of the world where the gospel is not welcomed. But these boxes will be taken by people and delivered to these children and relationships will be started and be, and begin these new relationships so that possibly someone might accept Jesus Christ and a door open to the good news of Jesus Christ. In, in late March, late March, uh, the last week in March and a little bit into April, we're sending a group of people who are praying right now who are collecting goods, who are signing up, doing the background check so that they can be in campuses, on school property, sharing the Easter story of the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus with thousands of children and teachers and parents. And we're already on the, on, on the go with that. And that's called Hope for Appalachia. So we're already looking at that. The youth ministry, the youth ministry has an event coming up in early February. They're having their winter uh, weekend retreat. And in doing that, they have chosen Colossians chapter three, verse 12, about how 
As God has changed your life, we now need to be compassionate. We need to be kind to one another. And so their theme is be kind. And in doing that, they're going to have fun with one another. They're going to study Colossians 3.12. They're going to talk about how Jesus Christ is working in their lives. Maybe some of these students might accept Jesus Christ. But they're also going to have ministry projects right here in central Virginia where they're going to go out and make a difference because we create opportunities to follow Jesus Christ. We create opportunities for people to hear about Jesus Christ. We are a people who bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. And those that's just the, the top of the list. I could continue on with what's happening in some small group Bible studies. I could continue on with what's happening in numerous ministries in this congregation as we create opportunities to follow Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter two, verses nine and 10. Earlier I said 10 and 11, my apologies. It's first Peter chapter two, verses nine and 10. But you who have accepted Jesus Christ, you're a chosen race. God, God chose you, he wants to use you. You're a royal priesthood. You represent Jesus Christ. You're a holy nation. You're a, you're a people of God set apart to glorify and magnify God so that people will see this and so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into this marvelous light. For you, you once were not a people. You once were not redeemed and restored. But now you are the people of God. And it's because of his grace and his mercy. And he says, and it's, it's not that you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Thank God. Thank God. And then our core values, meaning where does all this come from? The team narrowed it down to these three so that we can memorize them. We are compassionate, collaborative, and committed. Compassionate, collaborative, and committed. Meaning we care about people because God cares about people. The students will be looking at being kind because God is kind and merciful. Right there in verse 10. We had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy in God's provision in Jesus Christ. And therefore, we will treat others kindly. We will be a people who are compassionate. We will care about other people in our congregation, in our community, and worldwide. And we will seek to impact the world because we are a compassionate people, collaborative Meaning we partner together in the congregation. We partner with other ministries. We partner with other nonprofits. We partner with people so that we can bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. We partner with people who are creating opportunities to follow Jesus Christ because we want this message to go worldwide. Not just here in Central Virginia, not just in Virginia, not just in the United States, but worldwide. So we're collaborative. We learn from one another. We share with one another. We listen to one another. We bring ideas to the table. We're willing to adjust our methods as we learn and grow so that we can have this very clear message that Jesus Christ can redeem and restore your life and you can be forgiven and be brought out of that darkness and into the marvelous light and then committed. Committed. We are committed to helping people come to know Jesus Christ and we are committed to helping people grow in Jesus Christ. We're going to provide that. We're going to do that. We're committed to it no matter what it takes. At the same time, we're calling people, not just to attend church, not just to be nice, not just to be a good person, not just to say, oh yeah, I go to a worship service or hey, I'm a member of that church. Oh no, oh no. We're calling every individual in Spring Hill Baptist Church and around us to be sold out to Jesus Christ, to be sold out to the kingdom of God to offer yourself completely to Jesus Christ 
so that the Holy Spirit can invade you and, and work in you and through you and make a difference. And then in closing today, in closing today, our strategy is very simple. We want these are pure and simple so we can memorize them, so that we can think about them, so that we can flesh them out, so that we can evaluate and assess our ministries and our church on these. We're going to reach up and worship. We're going to glorify God. We come together right now on the weekends in three worship services with one intent to worship God, to call out to God, to pause, to recognize him and to say, God, we realize you're awesome. And we sing songs and watch videos and hear from his word so that we are stopping, so that we are pausing and we are worshiping God. We are looking up to God. We realize we are dependent upon God. We are not a self-sufficient, self-sustaining church. We need God and we are to be glorifying God in our lives. And then in that, as we look up to God and how awesome he is, and he reminds us of the redempt, redemption that he has brought into our lives, that he's brought us out of, the, out of this darkness into his marvelous light, we're then like, man, we have a message to share. We want to tell others about this. And so we reach out. We reach out to family members. We reach out to children. We reach out to youth. We reach out as we collaborate with other ministries. We reach out worldwide. But we also reach out right next door. So that people can have this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. And then we reach in. Man, we help one another. We care for one another. We welcome one another. We support one another. We encourage one another. We build one another up. We listen to one another. We're able to share with one another. Um, we come along and rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And we mourn with those who are mourning. So we reach in. We reach in and help out and assist. Which then that leads us to say, look how awesome God's is, God is. And then that leads us to say, we've got a message to tell. Let's go tell the people. And then that leads us to say, oh, you've accepted Christ. Come in. We want to encourage you and help you and come alongside you. This is a beautiful thing. So we, as a church, we, as a church, have this vision. Bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. As a church, we have a mission. Create opportunities to follow Jesus. As a church, we have these core values that, that guide us and have, have, in a sense, are making us. And that is we're compassionate. We're collaborative and we're committed. And we will carry this out as we worship God and reach up to God and worship, as we reach out to people in sharing our faith story and ministering to them and helping them and then saying, look, would you like to receive Jesus Christ and let him redeem you and make the difference in, in your life that he's made in my life? And then welcoming people in and encouraging them and helping them grow and helping them commit to Jesus Christ, helping them understand that they can create opportunities to follow Jesus Christ, helping them understand that they are a person of hope, helping them understand that they can share Christ with their friends and family and, and coworkers, helping them understand your life counts. You're a world changer. So we as a church, that's what we're about in the year 23 and beyond. And we want you to participate in that. So if you're interested in this, please contact us. Please connect with us. Please text us. Please scan that QR code. Please come by the church office because we want you to be involved in this wonderful, beautiful work of God.